Oh, this music is gonna come off right as the the minute rolls around. Dang it! I sometimes prep it so that the um there's at least a solid window where it's still the same song, but a lot of the Vasil music is only a minute long, so um you'll never well you always hear the end of it right away. And it doesn't loop right, but it will loop in the game. So, anyways, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream today on this fine twenty fifth of March, twenty twenty three. I hope for. Oh my gosh, I can't remember what year it is. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget the year all, all the time. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Let's jump right into the game, shall we? Um, do 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 do. I'm not sure where I'm going on that one. Come on, game. Come on. Here we go. Oh, wait. Oh. 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 Gosh, this is... Oh. Come on. Come on, game. You can get there. You can get there. I believe in your game. Come on. Oh my gosh. Let's get right into the game. And then proceed to not. Here we go. Woo! Oh, we got some sound. There we go. 20th Century Fox. Oh my goodness. This is a game that I had as a kid. I saw someone have it. And I was a sucker for anything with fake 3D. I just thought 3D was always the future when I was younger. And it turns out... Yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's just weird 3D. I don't know how long we can sit on this menu before something happens. I love the autograph on freaking Homer's got a tattoo going on, apparently. But, yeah, this is, uh, The Simpsons Road Rage, or Road, Road Rag. Greetings, Blub, how's it going? This is The Simpsons Road Rage, a, a console port of, uh, well, a, a handheld port of a traditionally console game, and um... Hold on, do I have a manual? Simpsons Road Rage... GTA manual. Because I would really love to describe what exactly this game actually, like, is about on the surface. I don't know if the GBA version actually describes it at all. So, let's just dive right into it, shall we? The Simpsons Road Rage, uh, pretty much the plot, I think, off the top of my head, is that Mr. Burns is doing something evil. I think he's putting nuclear power things in more places. Dang, my headset isn't working. I will say, oh, hold on, I've got the audio turned way down. So, uh, wah. Hopefully that's a bit better. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he wants to build nuclear power, whatever. Let's just jump right into a road rage. Uh, Everyone in Springfield hates it, but no one can afford to not have it. So the whole point is that they basically start up a taxi business or something. A crazy taxi business, if you will. Um, to try and raise enough money to pay Mr. Burns to not. That's the premise, basically. Uh, as a game, well, uh, I hinted at it, there you go. It's crazy taxi. Um, you can press A right on green, maybe, or right when they jump into the car and you get a boost. You'll see me maybe pull it off at some point. It's 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 a very surreal experience because uh, this is a very late GBA game. It's uh it came out in 2003, which is right when the GBA was at the end of its uh, lifespan. The DS was coming out the next year, and on top of that, The Simpsons Hidden. There you go. You can hear me again. Hello again. Hello. Um, on top of that, 2003 also marked the year The Simpsons Hidden Run came out on the consoles. Uh, Simpsons Road Rage was a 2001 title, and it certainly shows that it's an earlier uh, PS2 game from its experience. It's all these weird shortcuts all over the shop as well. But what I find very amazing is kind of how reasonably okay the 3D works. You've got a lot of different sprites for the rotation of the guy. Funnily enough, yesterday evening I watched a top five, top seven patented game mechanics. Oh, is the crazy taxi arrow one of them? Because uh, yeah, the yeah, crazy yeah, the crazy taxi arrow is always a fun one. This is a fun shortcut if uh, people don't take this, by the way. 
There's not really shortcuts in the other uh, maps, but we'll we'll get into that in a little bit, or in a long bit. I always take this weird cut for this as well. Um, yeah, every so often, you know, I, you've probably seen the gameplay enough to know exactly what goes on. You pick up, you know, people, you drive them to a destination, you get money for how good you are on time, and how not on time you are. Obviously, since this Road Rage got mentioned, yeah, because it's... Out of all the ones, I don't think anyone had the goal to try being exactly Crazy Taxi. Like, there's nothing conceptually that I think this game really does that Crazy Taxi doesn't. Um, it does have a, uh, a performance mode, which I don't know if that appeared in the console version. I think it did. I don't think this game really, like this handheld version, particularly has anything the console version didn't, other than a couple of the... Uh, the missions are actually kind of unique in their own way, but uh, we'll dive into that as we go. I'm just giving a giving a bit of an early sample of this is how you know uh, a map of uh, The Simpsons Road Rage goes. And you start seeing now we're at that point. The early snaps. Yeah, it's like it's it is just you know classic mode seven, but it does you know like there's hills. It will sometimes just fold and a bit of a really odd way um but then clearly like you know everything's a sprite like you know, characters down below are sprites although I, I am very impressed that like the passenger in your car is properly modeled and does rotate in the right way it's also whoops um usually they didn't try this style on the gba uh i mean there's there's plenty of mode 7 style uh style games um I don't even think this is Mode 7, I think this is actually, like, just proper... Oh, maybe it is Mode 7, because I was going to say it's got texture warping and stuff. But, uh... Yeah, the hills, I don't actually know how they did it. Usually, how you do it in games like that, um, games like this is, uh... Or, rather, in stuff like this is, um, like, a Mark Ride is a classic example, where you start applying, um, offsets, pixel offsets, uh, at certain spots, and that's how you can kind of fudge the, the, you know, the 3D, by basically applying, like, a bit of a sign, and you can kind of curve it a little bit, and it's like, yeah, that's good enough. Um, I think what's actually kind of fun, though, is that the, the, the far draw distance, even though it is kind of just vertical smearing, like, you'll see, um, like, go back and pause it at certain points in time when you can see the big hill. Oops. Um, when you can see a big hill and you'll see, um... Like, you know, multiple vertical pixels all doing the exact same thing. Because there's only so much draw distance that they got. It's not... Yeah, it's it's not... It's not what the GBA is really known for. Doing 3D. And it's not... It's not entirely capable. But it can, if you ask it to. There's some very impressive ones, like, um... Uh, I always note Big Mother Truckers for the GBA is properly a full 3D game. Oh, full-ish. It's doing some, some shortcuts, like, every game does some shortcuts, but... At some point, it's like, yeah, it's got polygons that are textured. So, it's got to count more than, you know, many other games. Um... Yeah, okay, we start getting to this run where you're at the end of the... You know, end of end of the the timer, and it's starting to wing it a bit more, and you're really relying that you're ending in the the target quite correctly. Uh, that game came out for the GBA. I don't know. There is, um, I'm not sure if there was a PC version. There, there might have been. There was a console version though. Um, but it, the fact there's a GBA version is uh, again very curious because I always love because it's like the GBA did okay. And there were a lot of game devs that were very willing to do GBA ports. It even has the sound effects. The sound effects kind of make it. But the characters don't say anything. So. Uh, if you actually, um, if anyone, uh, yeah, the PC version was on the disc of the gaming magazine of my choice. Ooh, very nice. Very, very nice. Made by everyone's favorite developers of, uh,. Street Racing Syndicate. What a weird connection there. What are they called? Eutechnics? Uh, so you can kind of get the gist that like every location has two characters and it's always the same two characters every time. Uh, so you get to choose eventually, once you know which characters go where, you can kind of 
lead yourself into a, a fun loop. Where you know exactly where s someone wants to go. Uh, some paths, they give you way more time than others. So I might be pushing it on some of these, but... If you're having a pretty smooth drive, you sort of should have it every time. We'll see. But for the most part, the way this game works is that you go into the thing, you do some, you know, some shibudori, you drive around, you make a bit of money, and then uh, eventually at various points of total money earned, the game unlocks stuff for you. But the goal is, at the end of the day, to get a million dollars total. And, uh... You can clearly see, I've only got 20,000. And uh, this lies the uh, inevitable problem of the game uh, for doing let's plays or long plays or whatever plays. Um, there you go. Uh, there's, there's not much like interesting stuff to actually do a full playthrough. So I'm dedicating this as a, a one-off showcase stream where I sort of do what I can for like an hour and we do the mission mode and then I'll uh, pop in a you know, a, a password. Because, also, this is the weird part. It's a 2003 GBA game without a battery save. It asks you to remember a password every time you finish a level. And it's like, wah. It's very odd. It's very odd. I, the, I assume the password is like, okay, it tries to remember your total uh, score. It, there's no leaderboards or anything. Oh, yeah. Mole Man here is just like, doom. No way, no way can you drive here that fast. What? Damn. There we go, so. It's a rarity, I sometimes see it. But it is a rarity. You're right, yeah, the, the, the word you get doesn't matter too much. And then yeah, it all catches in. And then uh, you might unlock things. You'll see that the next reward is at 50,000. Let's see how many goes we have, but kind of annoyingly, there's one level. In, in total, but this one we start off with. We unlocked Groundskeeper Willy and his tractor. Uh, just like the uh, console version, here's your password by the way, this is also fun to remember. There are 16 different characters, they could have totally just used letters of the alphabet, but nope, they decided to make it characters of the game, so. At least it's not a long password. When you're going into the options and yeah, yeah, it's not letters as well. You get it's it's such a pain to write down. When you're setting the password, it's just like ah, uh, uh. <laughs> So if you don't know which characters are which, good luck, man. Good luck. They they do have a sound check though. Do you know what they did? The sound check locks off the songs for the levels that you don't have, which is very pain. And there's an extras menu, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's the Road Rage mode. I don't think there's really any mystery to it. Uh, there is also a, uh, performance mode. Let's play as Grandpa. Grandpa is actually secretly the overpowered character. His car just handles the best. Uh, you also get to choose who you want to start off with. You can't choose yourself. I got my water, so... Uh, it doesn't really matter, well, it sort of matters a little bit who you choose. Different characters have different likes, uh, so you'll see apparently hitting things is preferable. Uh, there's also a horn bonus. And, uh, <laughs> chains and all this jazz. Um, what's actually kind of curious as well is that there's a difficulty, um, slider in the, in the menu you saw. Um, and interestingly, the difficulty actually makes the game faster and as in the game is quicker to beat if you play on on a normal or hard it actually might even be on hard if you really want to Let's give it a go maybe later um but uh stuff like the chain for example that's coming up doesn't appear if you're on easy and uh it means that hitting all these things you barely make any money playing this mode it's incredibly abysmal um so yeah so the trick is uh, you sort of drive around and you just, you know, cause a nuisance everywhere. Try to build up your chain. Uh, try to figure out what your character likes. And uh, make sure you're holding up when you go to the horns. Because uh, that's that's your cheap way to getting time bonuses. Because you're only going to get a time bonus once the character's bar is filled. Or if they like everything, which apparently, uh... 
What's, what's this guy's name? I forgot. I don't know my Simpsons anymore. I'm sorry. But uh, there you go. Once his bar is full, he uh, gives you a ton of seconds. And you press A, and then uh, you continue. Start the bar again. Keep making more money. And also, all the uh, all the icons reset, so all your your horn bonuses will come back. Um, yeah, it is it is nice that um, you know easy is actually like it punishes you a little bit for playing on easy by just going oh <laughs> do you do you want less money because you're not actually like pushing yourself at all better than scar yeah yeah stuff like that where it's like there's no reward and in fact actually um, you get an inverse incentive in a uh, Skyrim because it's just like oh like things like stealth are much more favorable when really the game should be designed around any play style. Yeah, Earth Defense Force does it well. I think, uh, it, like, the the great modern example of difficulty is Kid Icarus Uprising. Because it, uh, it prevents you from picking the harder difficulties, but it constantly, like, pushes you into, uh, doing the harder difficulties as you go. Like, it actually prevents you from playing the easier ones after a while. I'm pretty sure it does, doesn't it? Yeah. speed bonus since we're doing it, but the weapons you are also weaker, uh, have slower fire rate and less range. Yeah, 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 I'm trying to think of another game that's like that. I'm actually, I, I, I know I've been playing Grid Legends a ton. It doesn't have anything for the difficulty, but it does have a, a, a course length or a race length, and if you set it to a higher value, you're more likely to just, like, get all your, your upgrades so much sooner because they're based on the total distance you drive. We seem to be doing okay here. Uh, so the only real change is that higher difficulty is more fun. Time to kill enemies is actually lower. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a... Uh, there was another one I remember and it's just exactly like that where it's like, you know, you die faster but so do your enemies and it actually kind of balances out. Oh, Serious Sam is like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got um, it's got the the Serious difficulty, and then it's got the Mayhem difficulty. And the Mayhem difficulty uses um the enemy spawn uh, patterns from the difficulty below. May uh below Serious, maybe on like very hard. I think that's the name of it. EDF is one of my prime examples of well done difficulty. Nice, nice. Um, but yeah, yeah. So some people say certain levels in Serious Sam are actually easier on. Uh, serious instead of, oh sorry, instead uh, the the harder on the mayhem mode instead of serious, because it's just like, yeah, you know, I don't care that the enemies are twice as fast and sometimes invisible. It's the fact that there's fewer of them. Also, I appreciate that the uh, the music is mildly different, and the performance mode very nice. One of the archetypes of horde shooters. Yeah, exactly. Horde shooters really need, like, you know, a solid difficulty uh, to them. Yeah, it starts getting a little weird once you get later in the performance mode and every single sign is being moved around. And we keep getting out of the way and Flanders' face. <laughs> Uh, you know, you get nervous when the enemy's spawning here, the, the relentless. Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. One day, one day. This is, this is not a, this is not a Blendo deep cut. This is actually something I express, <laughs> I will continue to express interest for. I do want to actually play, um, a serious ham on stream. That'd be good fun. Playing the bombs. Oh, yeah. Like, like, I, some people do rip into serious ham, and to be honest, like, I get it. But it's also like, man, it is such a treat when it's like clicking for you. He really hates it when I hit science, doesn't he? Because yeah, diff so different characters like certain things. Serious Sam 2 has an amazing multiplayer speedrun. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, different different things cause your character's like bar to go up. Some things makes it go down, but usually not too much. Usually jumps are good. 
apparently hitting traffic cones is like very poker face. Hey, he's taking a sweet time getting the bar up, I'll tell you. And away we go. You can stand on- Oh, that's- that's fun. That's nice. Be able to stand on people. He jumps everywhere. This bar isn't going up. Why? What does he like? Barely going up, oh my gosh. Don't tell me the bar is harder to go up for later people. Maybe it is. And one person has to reach in. Aw, oh, that's that's good, that's nice. Yeah, I should get back I should really have a have another go at like the fast runs of Serious Aim. I don't have a mate to play Serious Aim 2 with, that's my only problem. Maybe one day. I, I, I am also a, a Serious Sam 2 apologist. I will defend every single thing people hate about Serious Sam 2. Are you telling me you think Serious Sam, like, can be too wacky? What? <laughs> Have you seen the level design? It's so wacky. It's ride a freaking dinosaur in level 4. They're like, oh, people hate the skeleton, the, the skeleton, the clees, the clears. So we, we threw them all into one world where every enemy is them, just to torture you for a moment. It's like, oh, it's great. Mwah. Love it. Yeah, I, it's it's a curious title though, because uh, I mean, Simpsons games. Have typically uh, not been good. Um, I know someone will go, "What do you mean the Simpsons Hidden Run was great?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it was a amazing." No, but yeah, pretty pretty good. Good, at, very good. You know, show. I'd say that it's got some annoying bits here and there. That's also another one where it's like, "What do you want that?" Road Rage. Uh, from what I feel, what I've sort of played, and someone might go, oh, you know, nostalgia goggles, or lack of nostalgia goggles, I mean. Um, but I think that the console version is not a very great game. And, to be honest, it's still got the same problem that this one has structurally of, what do you do? Here I am, in the same level, and if I don't score $27,000, I still have not unlocked the next level. And there's only six levels, so you're kind of stuck to playing the same levels again and again a fair bit as you go. Um, and even then, like, I think most long plays I've seen are around the 8 hour mark. There's only so much content that they really do put into a game, so it is kind of 8 hours of mm, sort of the same thing again and again. It does have a mission mode, I mentioned that. The mission mode does not give you any money, so it doesn't contribute towards any of this progress. As. Just his bar is never going up. Time to destroy some ambulances. There we go. Or you could be like Gamefax and you say it's a 16 hour game somehow. Listen man, it's, it's not 16. Because also on top of that, if you're not making money, you end the levels quicker. So, I don't think you're really <laughs> losing much. Uh, for, I guess, you know, not making money, so. Let's do another Road Rage. Uh, this time we'll be, uh, Groundskeeper Willy. There he is. So we have six levels, but they're all lock. Oh, I have one extra thing to show you as well. Because some people might be going, like, my game doesn't look like this. And I'll show off, exactly. There is a, uh, a European version that is not the same as this European version. I actually should uh, double check as well. Um, you can tell this car sucks, by the way. I, maybe there's like a strength to it? Like maybe it's like it can hit ob you know, obstacles so much, uh, so much better, but for the most part, I mean, you should be driving without hitting any obstacles anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, like, I didn't see it. <laughs> really response to getting hit by those guys, but it's like, eh. Kind of really slow. Really slow. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so let's uh, talk about some, uh, some drama. Um, the first, oh, it's not really drama, but, uh, what on earth is, uh, is, needs improvement about the world of video games. And, uh, the, I think the most pertinent one now is that I, uh, flip-flop on my opinions depending on how I feel more often now. And the, none, nothing has highlighted how much I've jumped than my acceptance to microtransactions. I sort of spoke about this the other day. I don't think I really, like, went into too much detail, but we've got the case in point example now, which didn't exist before. Um, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a game that just came out. Dragon's Dogma 2 is, uh, is an RPG. I don't know much about it, other than I did buy, um, not the first game, because it's kind of like a sequel. Oh, actually, is it, is it a... I don't know what the other Dragon's Dogma on Steam actually is, but I didn't think it was a sequel. I don't know, maybe it's something like that. Um, whatever the case, we have an actual Dragon's Dogma 2 that's out. Um, no, I, ju I don't know a thing. Someone's gonna... This, this is this is uh, underpin the whole thing of Blendo does not know about the game he's about to complain about. Uh, <laughs> my, my opinion is, is that whatever I see, it's gonna look real weird. Dragon's Dogma 2 is Dragon's Dogma 1. Now the director got a big butt. Oh, so it's oh, so it's more of the same game as opposed to okay, okay. I wasn't thinking it was like Baldur's Gate 3, because Baldur's Gate 3 is uh, I mean, like it's it's just it's a CRPG based on the Dungeons and Dragons mechanic of whatever game they choose, right? So, Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't exactly play quite like, you know, the other Baldur's Gates, because it's a newer version of Dungeons and Dragons anyways, but it's a CRPG nonetheless, nonetheless. Again, someone's gonna tell me, oh, I'm completely wrong, I'm an idiot, I've never played these games. The only reason why the microtransactions are talked about so much, because Dragon's Dogma 2 is really bad in performance and actually literally unplayable for some people from crashes. I've seen some, some very negative, yeah, feedback from the crashes, and... Um, it could, yeah, I, it could be badly implemented to Nubo, because I think the, the biggest, like, case in point is the consoles don't seem to struggle too bad, so, yeah, it, as for the game itself, I think the game is fine. If you remove, ignore the microtransactions, ignore the performance, ignore the fact that people are killing citizens because it makes their FPS much better, um, that's always a fun game, okay, just like the first game, the stuff you can buy. Yes, uh, and and yeah, the first game, did the first game have microtransactions, or it was just like it's it's designed basically the same as the first game, but now there's microtransactions. Adam, how long ago was the first game? I thought it was a fair bit older. Man, okay, um, and 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 yeah, I I would like to underpin that. I know from like now that I'm reading up, Dragon's Dogma Two is not the first Capcom game to milk the microtransactions. It's, uh, Monster Hunter World certainly is that. Um, uh, what was it? Devil May Cry 5 had a very similar, uh, thing. Now, when I say milk as well, so, uh, for a big correction, almost all of it is cosmetics, and almost all of what is remaining is one-time use consumables that can be earned in the game. How easy it is to earn them you need to, you know, you should probably judge, but I think, you know, at case point, the microtransactions are completely unnecessary and they would uh, only have any kind of impact on the early game. Um, yeah, so, so this leads me into what I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna coin the microtransaction contradiction or paradox going on. If microtransactions don't mean anything, then why do, why are they added into the game and offered so prevalently like I I feel like there's lots of games where and, and and there's plenty of examples of games where they have microtransactions and you don't need them I played Deus Ex The Fall and that's just that's a case in point example of like yeah like why why would they they first reviews by the few diehard DD fan channels are out they love it 
I think it's good that people can enjoy it though. Like, performance needs to be sorted, obviously. Um, microtransactions, uh, from what I've heard, the microtransactions are actually not, oh, they're not even advertised, they're just on the store. Interesting, interesting. Um, I did see some very horror stories from top of the Steam reviews, and I really wanted to look more into it, but, um, yeah, so that's better than 9% of other games. Um, keep that in mind, I will, I will address exactly your sentiment, um, in a, in a bit, but, uh, yeah, what I wanted to look into was, um, Dragon's Dogma 2 came out with a character editor earlier on, like, before it came out, so you can make a character and then be ready to play the game. Um, one curious point that people noticed was you uh, apparently need a uh, an item in order to change your character's appearance. The early Steam reviews didn't mention that apparently you can earn it in-game, but they saw that you could buy it for real money and uh, then said editing your character is... Pay to win is probably a bit of... Uh, well, inflammatory, but uh, certainly... Um, you know, having to pay money in order to edit your character again after, you know, creation is kind of annoying. Um, they only forgot the new game button. That, yeah, that, that also doesn't help the, like, the situation because people then think, um, because I saw someone say, you can't delete your save. If you try to delete it, you'll be prompted to download it from the internet. Now, I don't know if that's just Steam Cache. I, I, I believe there is no new game button because I'm very certain um, Capcom gave an announcement saying like, yeah, no, we're working on that. Which is very odd that you somehow made a game without a new game button. That just seems like thing number one. Like, your devs will use the new game button. I don't know how you forget that. Oh, oh, we're going to be coming in fine. We're going to be coming in fine. We're good, we're good. Okay. But yeah, when people see that you need to pay money in order to edit your character and you're not allowed to delete your save, which... I'm really gonna grain of salt that because I don't know... Like, if it's just the Steam remote, it's like, bro, you can just turn off your Steam cache. Or your Steam, um, you know, cloud saves. Also, does it work if you turn off the internet? Like, I'm, I'm curious. Um, but not being able... Oh, ah. Not being able to customize your character. The main menu I was on finalized days before launched. Yeah, if, um, I mean, I don't, I don't accept that as if, like, I mean, I, I, I accept that it could happen, but I don't accept that, like, it's not acceptable to <laughs> have your game in a bit of a buggy state like that. I, I don't know, man. Um, yeah, disable Steam Cloud, delete the save, start a new game, enable Steam Cloud. Yeah, that seems, that seems pretty fair. Or alter, uh, you delete your, your game save and then immediately, oh, I'm curious, but... So, and we've got a new location. Oh my gosh, I can actually play a, something new. Wow. Copy my password. <laughs> Keep going. We got uh, some more people. We got the Canyonero. These are all cars that I think actually appear in the show in some way. I think the Canyonero was a classic episode of uh, everyone buying SUVs. Look at that, a different environment. You're gonna see some... The, I appreciate the actual variety between the locations in this game, like, even though, yeah, I'm driving around, you know, still. I think there's something actually, like, kind of neat about, like, how these things are laid out. You'll notice that there's a highway that actually goes right around the entire, like, map here. And then you're gonna see some fun, like, whatever shortcuts all over. And the skybox is different, yeah. But you're gonna see things like this, where it's like, oh, the path is, like, forever out of the way. But, like, you just notice there's this little dirt road here. And now, oh, look at that, I'm right here. So there's lots of little interesting little pathways you can actually go. Uh, there's also some other fun mechanics. Maybe I'll get, to, I'll probably show them off at some point. Yeah, they did try. This one is definitely like, they tried quite a fair bit on this game. Other than with these characters, like, there's a couple of, like, uh, we only have so many character models. Or character sprites. So they just put these very generic people and they'll sometimes just change their hair color and like, look, different character. This is Shelly, you remember? Looks a bit inferior. It's, it's inferior. There's only so much you can do on the GBA. Certainly. Um. So. So, okay. So, to go to your point of, 
okay, well, it's it's entirely optional. The game itself doesn't, yeah, doesn't mention, doesn't really bring up the microtransactions. Um, so that, yeah, I would go, so why, why do they offer them? Why do the microtransactions exist? By the way, here's your cool mechanic. You can see the road goes around like that. But I always like driving off around here. And that tells you you're going the wrong way. But check this out. Whoa. <laughs> they can't do path over path. So they do these weird like warped sections for the, for the tunnels. There's a map later on. And I'll, I'll have to do a password for that. Because Capcom... Yeah, I, that seems to be the answer. It's not something I like, and I actually would really want to shout out Capcom, and really anyone who does this, and to some degree, uh, maybe it's a bit, you know, accusatory, but it's like, I don't really think uh, people should be <laughs> contributing to that as well. Like, I know there's the classic thing of, well, if you just don't like the microtransactions, just don't buy them, but I feel like also people should be criticize that they're even there in the first place. I like how the, the highway road makes you drive fast, that's kind of fun. Um, like, we should be free to criticize it, like, yeah, like, you know, I don't like these microtransactions and the, the, you know, the, the, just getting this, like, bit of extra money, especially as well, and I know people made the case of, like, oh, you know, microtransactions are only acceptable in free-to-play games, and I'm like, man, I don't even like the free-to-play model, because, funded off the microtransactions and I know like someone that's a, that's a controversial take but I'm like yeah I all I want to do is just buy a game and then that game is it I don't it doesn't need to be supported for years after launch better this kind than say blizzard kind yeah yeah which is weird and this is why I say like I'm probably a hypocrite because back in the day I would have said I'm okay with overwatch but now I'm in this weird part where it's like yeah looking back at it I felt like I basically enabled it, even though I never did participate in buying any loot boxes. The fact that I logged on every week to basically play the game and have some loot boxes is like, oh, probably pet, you know, played into it. So these ones you can ignore. So yeah, to that I'm like, if they're ignorable, then why do they exist? And if they're not ignorable, why do they get in the way? It's, like, that. that's that's my problem. It's like, for the people who play the game, Overwatch PvE is completely cancelled. Oh, like, full cancelled now? Like, they've actually said they're not making any PvE at all? Because I know, I know they talked about, um, like, that was the whole point of Overwatch 2 for the longest time. Answer both greed. Yeah, I... Greed is probably the answer, which is a bit unfortunate. But it's like it probably is, and I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to say necessarily because the company just wants money, because there's probably more forces. They like half, uh, go half the devs, basically, all the ones working on TV. Oh, rip, rip! I know the companies are shrinking down a ton. Like, yeah, I, I know companies work on, um, you know, like they need to make money, I guess. And then on top of that, a lot of these companies are sometimes publicly traded and sometimes just privately invested in anyways um, and they want to see line go up and unfortunately the tunnel is so cool it's very cool I love it they want to see the line go oh my gosh I swear I'm going into the grandpa line and I said keep in the other guy it does that fun pixelated effect like it's a uh, Mario world as well it's great There was like, um, uh, yeah, I, I've been playing Crash Nitro Car on the GBA again. And one, it's got, um, digitized sounds. So you can actually, like, get some voice lines used from the console game. And then on top of that, uh, one of the tracks actually has a day-night cycle. It's a very simple effect, and it really just affects the skybox and the, the color palette used on the ground. But it is kind of, full, uh, you know, very neat. Um... But yeah, yeah, but I, I felt like I enabled the, the loot boxes in, in Overwatch by participating in it, and then it got so much worse. Um, partially because the Overwatch League stuff was like, oh, we're charging time for that. And I know that's actually cosmetic, and a lot of the money went towards the actual League itself. Um, 
but it's like to me as a consumer it's like well i'm just part of this um and yeah 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 so the so the companies themselves have invest investors most investors right now are panicking because the line is not going up for a lot of these companies and for the ones that it is usually the massive companies that had so much stuff that you know, the safety nets are insane or they're nvidia Inv nvidia is like like i i I, I sometimes joke with my mates, it's like, oh, NVIDIA, please hire me. How on earth do you get here in time? No way. No way there's enough time to get there. Well, dead zone character. Never choose, never choose Edna in that, in that uh, exchange. Skill issue? It probably was a skill issue. I'm also choosing crap cars. I'll, I'll blame the car. Uh, so let's, um, let's, uh, spice up the, uh, the, the stream a little bit by jumping into, so you got Sunday Drive where you can just, it's just uh, Road Rage without the time limit, or the money. Oh, and I hit the emulator speed up, very nice. I'm glad I have that down there. Uh, there's a head-to-head -head mode, which is kind of nice, um, just as a fun little mode. Um, although it does turn off traffic, so it's not as impressive looking as you might think it is. Um, and, uh, we have the mission mode. The mission mode consists of... 10 missions, uh, including, well, well, we'll give it a check. I should probably be reading out the descriptions. Uh, they're pretty uh, straightforward, um, but to be fair, they're also like this in the console game. Uh, I know I'm about to do like a little bit of a loop here, but uh, I'm just gonna drive around the usual way. Um, I used to struggle a ton on these when I was younger, because I couldn't drive, I couldn't just like hold R to do that weird drift that I keep doing all the time. Good! Very nice. Um, it's pretty simple though, the, the mission mode. But some of the, some of the later missions are like, oh, okay. Um, I think in the console game they're, they're a bit of a joke. Like, they're not really that fancy in the in the console game. There we go. We got Balloon. Very nice. So yeah, I should probably read out the descriptions. We got Mr. Burns has bought out the Springfield shopper and filled the paper with pro-transit propaganda. Willie won't stand for it. He needs to seek out and destroy 12 newspaper boxes before time runs out. Now we got this one. Professor Frink is trying to make his hovercraft fly. You must use the clouds as jumping boards and float in the air for more than the time limit. This one is cool, because we start getting, like, courses like this that only exist for, like, a fun little game here. The goal here is just to hit enough, like... Oops. To hit enough clouds and, and you know, make it out. Interestingly as well, uh, the difficulty that I mentioned earlier actually affects this as well. I know if you're on easy, you only have to go for five seconds. It's real quick. But if you're on normal, which is probably how the game's designed. Uh, yeah, mission two is gonna kick your butt a bit. Also, there's a volcano. We have a volcano level at some point. Game has lava, it's in my good books. I'm not doing a good job though, am I? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really know what's the, I mean, I think, my, my best outcome for, uh... Um... Oh, 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 oh. There we go, and then you just fly off! <laughs> Away we go! Woo! Um... You get an extra option at missions 2, 5, 8, and 10. So, we'll see how we go. Barney had a rough night and he's going to take it out on the town's various mascots. He needs to find and knock over at least 12 mascots before time runs out. Well, there they are. This is, uh, this is the, uh, fourth map. So, we'll, we'll, we'll be visiting this at some point. It's a cool map. It's cool. I actually like this one. This one's a bit understated. Because it is just, like, lots of, like, city streets. But it's also, you know... The flow is very, very, you know, there is no flow. The flow, the flow is basically wherever the heck they want to take you. So, and as for the mission, I mean, you could drive around in really any direction. 
I could be like me and somehow not find anyone and start to panic. What on? What was that green card doing? Did you see that? He was going somewhere. I'd really like for some mascots to appear in the last like two seconds. Thank you. I'm sad. Uh, it was a hovercraft, yes. Well, in that case, we'll go left. Or forward, rather. Uh, how balanced are the car choices? None at all. Grandpa is the best one until you get Apu, who is the, the last car in the game. Uh, they're, they're not balanced at all, which is uh, a bit unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to be cutting it fine because I'm not really going a great way. Oh, oh. There we go. First try. Um... They, they differ in terms of their weight, so how slow they go when you hit people, uh, their acceleration, their top speed, and their handling. Otto's driving test. Today is the day for Otto to take his driving test. He must obtain 20 flags. He must reach the goal within the time limit to receive his driver's license. I think in the, um, in the console game, you'd also uh, note uh, different voice lines if you think that certain people are annoying. This one's a cool track. There's not even a school track. This skybox only appears in this uh, this one mission. Too bad the school appears like eight times as you turn around. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Gives me a very uh, GBA Mario Circuit 3 vibe, you know. Uh, there's more flag. Oh, That's a bit weird. There's more flag. Uh, yeah, there's more flags than the actual ones there. So don't feel bad if you miss one. Yeah, you see the one in front of me disappeared. But they do cut the time fairly tight for, uh, for normal. Time for the next mission. Chief Wiggum is chasing Snake. In order to escape, Snake takes a risk by crossing a dangerous bridge. To avoid Chief Wiggum, Snake must successfully cross the bridge within the time limit. Now this one, also fun. They even have a map for you as well. <laughs> And yeah, we uh, that's some real wacky just like maps they use just for this mission mode. Uh, don't fall off, by the way. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see some examples. I love how they have these little side cuts to the left, but they all have these like weird dead ends or a gap there. It's like, oh, okay. Just make sure you use your brake button because you can be a bit careful here. And my nose is itchy. Oh my gosh, my nose has been itchy all stream. This is the worst time to have an itchy nose. Oh my gosh. Alright, uh, didn't Mario Kart on the GBA have uh, better graphics than this? I think it was about the same, but Super Circuit did come out a, like much earlier. And also, if we're going to start comparing like handheld game graphics, it's like, oh, we're, we're almost at that point where Ridge Racer DS came out the year after. Because it was a uh, watch time, wasn't it? I need a time remaining on this one though. But there's also some things that like, like Mario Kart on the GBA, I don't think it had as good a draw distance, so. Uh, Homer was hanging out really late at Moe's Tavern and fell asleep. Moe was unable to wake him up, so now he must drive him home before Marge finds out. <laughs> this is a bit of a wacky map. Uh. Pretty much, they punish you for going the wrong way, and they have these jumps all over the place. Going those left two routes, just weird dead end. Drive along here, just holes. These are holes, apparently. Don't worry. Now it's all holes. If you accidentally, yeah, if you accidentally hit like <laughs> a corner, you just sink. Like it's a freaking drain plug. Also, I don't know what's with the face in the moon. I guess from the show. I know a bit of Simpsons, but I don't know a lot of Simpsons. And uh, I, I guess that's the thing, I mentioned Hit and Run was a, one of the more okay games. I think some people thought the, the Simpsons game was pretty okay as well. Um, but 
Other than that, I, is there any other good Simpsons games? Don't tell me Bart vs. the Space Mutants is actually a good game. So you gotta go right here, because you can see on the map, if you went middle or left, you just loop back to the beginning. It's like, oh, okay. And then here's something cheeky. You gotta lean right here. So one, two, three. Otherwise, you don't actually get out of here. Now you're in pretty smooth sailing, you just gotta somehow follow a path and not accidentally jump back out into the void. Just go around the outside. Maybe they had more intentions for this kind of map, but it's only ever used here, again. Yeah, black road spots are not holes, yeah. A donut truck is driving near a cliff with a door open. All of the donuts are falling down the cliff. Chief Wiggum, who is patrolling near the bottom of the cliff, is gathering as many of the donuts as possible. This one's one where it's like, oh my gosh, there's a donut score. And you gotta pick up the donuts. And you get chain bonuses if you're doing alright. Some of them give you tons of points, some of them not as much. It's fairly straightforward, just, you know, have your hand break about you. you. should be all set. There you go. But this is what I mean, like, these missions are like... They're alright! They're really trying! They're, they're doing lots of, like, fun stuff! Too bad it, like, it only exists for like 30 seconds there. Lisa just found out a logging company is chopping down trees in Redwood Forest. She is going to disrupt their plans by knocking over eight of their neatly placed piles of wood. Uh, this takes place in the sixth level. The last level. And you gotta drive Lisa's car, which is very slow. Now a bunch of these maps, not all of them I think, but a bunch of the maps have virtually a similar layout to the console version. So if you were to compare, it would be pretty similar. Uh, I do not know the path that you should take, by the way, on this one. I'll probably take it the wrong way. I think I'll probably take it the wrong way. Yeah, no, definitely. Menu restart, the best kind of restart. Alright, we got a double time on these planks of wood, I tell ya. Uh, also, this one's got a fun tunnel, and then it changes the skybox on the other side. Very nice. Oh, oh, we might be good. We're good. Yeah! First try. Very nice, very nice. Dude, we're almost done with these missions, by the way. There's only two left. Uh, this one's probably the longest one, though. Krusty is training himself to be a member of a circus team. He needs to learn to rope walk, balance himself on a ball, jump through fire rings, and collect a star item at the end of each event. This one is the longest one. They give you 3 minutes 45, which is, I guess, just enough time. Uh, I'm gonna skip the first two, just for a moment, because we've got to backpedal a little bit. And uh, go into the last one, because the last one has pits. And if I fall into a pit, I don't want to do the other two first. So how do you do this? Well, we'll jump through the fire rings. The fire rings uh, will slow you down slightly, but also prevent you from turning and stuff while you're on fire. So, uh, it's not the easiest to line up. But if you do, cool. Just snakes all over the place, man. It's just... It's just a very bizarre, you know, sure, okay. Pick up a star, and then it gives you a nice little route to get out of here, somehow. Ooh. There you go. Alright, let's go backpedal now. So yeah, so we've got three, three little rooms, three different challenges. Gotta do them all. This ball is, uh, kinda interesting. You gotta reverse. 
but your controls aren't inverted, you're just reversing. Uh, you also have to tap the reverse, because uh, you'll see sometimes you slide down, which means you need to accelerate the other way. Oh. Uh, if you hit a wall, then you goof like me a little bit. You gotta drive all the way back. Also, it's a maze. This is very annoying. How, how dare they? There you go. Okay. So, okay, in that case, we go right, and then we go left. Now we're good. Whoa. 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 There you go. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not like I'm having to juggle left and right at the same time. You basically just turn. Hit the green, and then you're good. There you go. The star even said I'm good. Nice. There we go. And now we just need to get to the last bit. Well, the first bit, really. Uh, which is the tight ropes. Uh, they're pretty wide right now, but as you keep going down, this again, just another maze. Another maze. Uh, as you keep going down, uh, they get thinner and thinner as you go. Get a little jump as well. There you go, here's your thin ones. Who built this? And who designed this? They just put like, <laughs> just a maze of like, Pathways I've read. This is a bait, by the way. If you go forward, you jump straight to the beginning. It's like, why? Why would you do that? Uh, this one, technically, if you do the jump, you're fine. But you're a little further away than you would have been otherwise. There we go. We're good. Now we can just drive to the end. And around the corner we go, and then we just hightail. Yeah, what a curious, like, little mission. And again, a bunch of these missions don't appear in the console version. They're a bit more interesting than the console version's one. Last few jumps. And if you have all the stars and you cross the line, then you win. And if you don't, then you lose. Because you didn't grab the stars. You loser. So one last mission. Homer is going to get Mr. Burns once and for all by destroying the statues in his garden. Homer needs to break ten statues before time runs out. This also takes place in the sixth level. There's a little part at the end which is uh, meant to be Mr. Burns' mansion. He's chasing you, he's gonna bump you. You just need to go around and touch his statues. Collect, destroy, what does it matter? It's a little, it's a little weird and a little bit, you know, simple, I guess, but it's gotta be a boss fight, I guess, of some variety. Why was Mr. Burns always the villain? What did he ever do? The man is just trying to run a business and make a living. Uh, where is the last statue? Is it here? There it is. Yeah. It's really not that bad. So, and that's all 10 missions. It took me 18 minutes. <laughs> What do you get as a reward? You get the car built for Homer, which is probably from some episode of the show, but I don't know which one it is. <laughs> it also doesn't control any better than the other cars, including the other Homer car. Interesting. Yeah, that's your mission mode. Uh, as we went along as well, we also unlocked um, some other extras. You have a background, so you can change the background of the main menu to the house. Or alternatively, the school. Doesn't really do too much, it's just, it's just there. Why not? Uh, we also have course layout. You can see an actual, yeah, you know, bit, bit more detail of what exactly is going on in each of the courses. Uh, for example, seeing that this one's a bit more involved, you can even see all the tunnels uh, down there in the bottom left and stuff. They're a lot more involved, and I honestly don't know why you would even go into any of those tunnels at the bottom left. But you can if you want. You can't see the remaining levels just yet. I'll show them off at the end. We also have a thing called Color Edit. You can take any car you want. And you can just go, yeah, you know this red? I hate it. I want it to be green. Which is like one part of its color palette.
Can we just make the most hideous green, like, sprite? I think this actually is, like, what is defined in the color palette. This is, like, five bits per color. So you could totally store this color into two bytes. And then how many colors is this? 16? So 32 bytes for a color palette. Yeah, that seems alright. Absolutely hideous though. Absolutely hideous. I'm actually curious, does this save with your- this totally shouldn't save with your password, right? No way. No way would they encapsulate this in the password. Why is this in the game? I'm not even sure, to be honest. Now we can chroma key anything into the game. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just... This is the- I, I remember like doing like stupid stuff like this, like I'm not really an artist. At all. I, I know zero art skills. Well, I know my music, but... <laughs> I, I don't know, I just... I just look at this and I'm like, eh... Uh, uh. So, uh, while I do this, and we'll probably just dive into another- another round of driving around town, um, I'd like to mention, uh, another- another piece of news. But it might have been backpedaled, so I don't know, my news is probably old. Uh, but that was this, uh, this one little bit of news, which was, um, Kotaku, uh, some signals from- I think the editor-in-chief sat down. And then there were some signals from higher-ups saying, or maybe that actually was why the editor-in-chief uh, went down, was um, the uh, the editorial content they were making, very lovely, the editorial content they were making wasn't really, you know, worth it. It's not attracting clicks, it's not attracting, you know, any, like, fun attention. Um, so instead they're going to try and shift their focus away from the editorials and into... <laughs> silly. I think there was a frame where it was uh, faded in and it wasn't actually uh, colored yet. <laughs> it's just so silly. That's your, that's your reward for eight of the missions, by the way. It's just curious that that's the case. Very nice. The green machine has arrived. Um... But, uh, but yeah, they're gonna move away from that into guides and other kinds of articles that are just like, Hey, did you ever want to do this? Here's how to do it. Like, they, they just describe it like that. And, you know, I got, like, no problem with that. And, to be honest, the editorial content, uh, apart from the fact that you're trying to make money and also you're a site that reviews things, I don't actually hate the idea of journalist editorial content as long as it's well, you know, Described. This is a wacky path as well, because uh, I'm just going to go... Well, I can't, can't go that way because it's a ramp, but it's like... Can I just go around this way? It's going to keep telling me I'm going the wrong way, but trust me, I think I'm going the right way. Without a blend in with the ground, you'll never be able to see me. Um, but uh, I also, you know, I'm not someone who ever pays for, uh, the games journalism, so I completely get the idea that, uh, you know, making- Oh, I should do a hard mode. I should do a hard mode. Um, I completely get the idea- Oh, can I just bounce between these two? I think I'm- No, no, it was at the one just below where I'm about to drive to. Um. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know, I'm not one to exactly pay for, for games journalism stuff, and honestly, um, you know, I don't particularly think uh, there's been enough of a, a good job, at least compared to other people. Like, if I want, like, guide content or whatever, lots of forums or uh, game facts even, are, like, they do the job. They're, they're really solid. The job gets done. Oh, I think I've actually got my loop.
if I go here, some, uh, it was snake, right? Snake's on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's gonna ask me to go up, and then I just go for whatever that was, Principal Skinner. And then we got our loop, and I can just chat about Kotaku without paying attention. Oops. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if that was the kind of content that they were shifting towards, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's okay, it's up to them. Um, I've always, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I think the reputation of Kotaku is, uh, certainly smeared beyond belief. It's like, eh, hey, you know, it's Kotaku. They have a lot of, like, trash editorials. The people, like, people, people joke they don't actually play the games, and that's kind of the reason why they push back on writing the game guides. Um, and obviously it's not true, I guess, I think. I, I did mention that uh, that uh, article about Helldivers last week from IGN. That was IGN, though. That wasn't a uh, Kotaku. But it's like, that's a similar thing of like... And, and to be honest, here am I describing Dragon's Dogma 2 without having played any game by Capcom for quite a while. Uh, just checked on YouTube, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Was about the, Yeah, it's about this. It's not, it's not really worse. It's not really better. But it certainly came out two years before. So... <laughs> um... It does run at 60 as well. Both of them do. Destroy stuff. There we go. Um... But yeah, the... Uh, like... The, yeah, uh, it looks slightly better, I think, but that's because they have less details on the road. Yeah. These have some weird, like, road textures all over the place, and you can definitely tell the squares, like the jaggedness, because the texture stops. But I think also the maps are a bit more, uh, I guess, larger in this one. But then again, there's also only six levels. Whereas, uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit is, what, 20? So, it really doesn't add up to too much more. But can you paint your car entirely green? Can you make him all green? I didn't think so. This game is art. Uh, but yeah, no, the like, I know I've got a very negative opinion about games journalism in general, um, but I think there's, there is always, uh, I guess, a place and a reason why it exists. I don't particularly think that, uh, a hundred percent, like, just whatever crowd filtered me. I don't know, actually, because I guess at the end of the day, people just play the games and figure out themselves whether the journalists were right or not, but... The whole point is that the journalist should be telling us exactly what to play and what not to play, and when that isn't clicking with you, it's like, oh, okay. Or they're not really telling you about, like, what's coming up, because, uh... I don't know, I, I, I don't feel like they explain it in a good enough detail for me, so... I'm out of that one. Um, game guides, and that kind of, like, after the launch content, it's like, hey, that's... I don't know if that's exactly what I need, I don't know. I really thought about it. You want journalists that are consistent in what they like and dislike? Yeah, but I, I also, like, I don't, I'm not saying every journalist needs to like and dislike the exact same things I do, but I want one journalist and a big site to, to share that opinion. And then you have to find out how you like or dislike what they like or dislike. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it. Um, and, and I guess there's always a, there's always an element of, um, uh, like, if I say corruption, that's probably a fairly strong word. But there is a degree of, they don't need to like what you like. Yeah. But as long as I get why they like something, and if I can go, hey, you know, he likes these things for this reason, and then he's playing another game and he has that same reason, I like games with that reason. And so that's, I can connect with that even if I don't fully match. I, I, I've ripped into G-Man Lives for fighting with my mutuals on Twitter, but I also generally find that he does like a lot of the games that I do like. Um, so, I find that, yeah, you know, his reviews are meaningful to me. Um, 
but they have to be consistent what they like. Yeah, exactly. Because if they flip-flop too much, and to be honest, I probably flip-flop a bit, so I don't know if I'd be any better. Um, but yeah, and they can't like things just because someone paid them to. And that's that's a big problem with the, the you know, some journalist websites was when they hired too many staff to review too many games, and then suddenly IGN suddenly starts giving, like, very average games 7.8s and very good games 7.8s, and it's like, what? Uh, like, someone likes a specific game because you value certain mechanics. Yeah, and I, I think valuing mechanics is certainly the keyword here, is, is like, what does, what do I get out of a review? My golden review, and I will eternally cherish this, and highly recommend if you haven't seen it, go and watch it, is the GameSpot review of Metroid Prime, uh, done by Greg Kasavin, who was a senior editor at the time. Um, now he works at Supergiant, and I'm like, yeah, now I have Krusty's Clown Car, wow. I still don't have a new track, a new map. It's just the eternal grind. I should be able to get it in just before 1 hour 30. We should be good there. Um, let's do the car built for Homer. Um, but, yeah, that review, it's like, that immediately got me into, like... That was the video that made me really care about, like, internet content in general. Because I just saw the internet as, like, a fun, silly place, and I played Neopets on that. And then I saw that Metro Prime review, and I realized, like, this is a guy who... One, he gets page. Uh, does it show? Nope, it does not show the car stats. You just have to guess. Uh, I believe it does in the console version. But you could probably take a guess of like which cars have, you know, like the larger cars, like the bus and the truck. And the tractor are obviously going to be heavier than, you know, like, uh, you know, grandpa's shipping car. Also, Millhouse does not get a car, unfortunately. You cannot play as Millhouse in this game. And you might say, oh, it's because kids can't drive, but Lisa is literally in the same year of school. Can't play as Maggie either, can't believe it. Uh, but yeah, and, and perhaps that actually, you know, me mentioning Triple G is kids aren't allowed to drive. Usually, usually. Well, they're not allowed to get caught driving. That's the important thing. I'm gonna be a terrible influence, I tell you. Actually, sorry, they're not allowed to be caught in Australia. They are allowed to drive on private property. You are allowed to let your kids drive on, on your property, technically, or on anyone's property if they're okay with it, technically. Uh, accountability, obviously, if uh, they crash is entirely on you, but uh, in theory, the police cannot arrest you if your child is driving your car while still on your property. And they're doing a good job with it. I wish there was a way to kind of cut right there, but there isn't. So I think you actually do have to take the wrong way. There it goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that point on me mentioning Triple G is kind of like that's that's the problem that Kotaku and every journalist site has. You are competing with a guy who knows how to alloc uh, allocate himself. Oh my gosh, I've never used that word in a long time. Um, knows how to knows how to speak on YouTube and edit his own videos in a way that's like kind of engaging. That's all you need. These sites have to compete with such low budget efforts that get just as much traction and revenue as them. Um, now Kotaku clearly has an advertising budget, and that always helps, but. It's a, uh, it's an uphill battle. They really have to fight for that. They really have to, to go for that. And obviously, you know, people work for them and want to have full-time, you know, salaries. And uh, it's tricky when the site doesn't actually earn that much money. It was fine when you know it's part of a larger media group and maybe you know they just need to grow. They just need to grow their influence. But I think over time we've sort of seen, nah, that doesn't really happen. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really work out like that. Like. The site itself can't grow. Journalist sites, very tricky for them to grow. And it's a bit cutthroat. It is very, you know, very tough love. But I think that is the case. How does one make a media site work in a day age of hyper, you know, internet? We're, we're almost about, 
we are like a handful of years away from the point that any and we're probably experiencing it already with like music and movie or oh, maybe not music because music is one where it's like no one can like explain music really uh, i mean you can you can describe and explain music but like the average person who listens to music doesn't know what describing music actually means so they're just going to go and listen to it um which i think is actually very curious we can describe audiovisual content very very in detail and games very in detail um but uh yeah, try to describe music, it's like, uh, you know, a lot of people who like music don't, you know, don't describe it in, in the same words, so. Uh, but the, yeah, like, we're almost at the point where we're gonna have freaking AIs, like, just explain the games and the movies to people, and the books while we're at it, and now it's like, yeah, you don't have to read that, you don't have to buy that, the AI is given a blurb description, which is completely in fair use. Oh, I wish I had one more power there. Dang it. Uh, we're almost at that point. So, these game journalist sites, they're not just competing with the influencers, they're competing with, you know, the inevitability of AI replacing all of our jobs at some point. A dark, dismal society where the only people who succeed are, again, NVIDIA. Paid a ton of money, they built a ton of infrastructure. And apparently, <laughs> apparently called it right. Dang it, Nvidia. Dang it, but totally right on that one. Um, does it suck? It totally does suck. It does like I mean, it's not fun for anyone to lose their job because of crazy technology shifts. It happens. We're gonna, I don't, you know, economic conditions are gonna be very interesting if. Uh, Video just soaks up all the money, or any, you know, handful of companies soak up all the money. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out, I guess. As for the Kotaku people, uh, you know, there the, were the memes ages ago of, like, learn to code. Of, like, oh, like, you know, if, if your writing job gets replaced, just learn how to program, because it's always relevant. And, uh, maybe for a while it, it is going to still be, oh, man, I could be taking a shortcut, because, uh, I'm going to get told off. Cut it fine. There we go. Um, yeah, some of these sites did, uh, you know, pe people did rip on them and say, oh, you should learn to code, but like, oh yeah, this one's, this one's weird, where it's like, even though it looks like I should take two shortcuts, it's actually, I think, quicker to go on the highway. Because you get the quickest speed, it's very odd. Poor Barney. Poor, poor Barney. Will he get- Oh, will I get there in time? Oh, it's because I did that weird spin at the beginning. Oh, we're good. I gave myself one second. Very nice. Very nice. We're good, we're good, we're Gucci. Uh, but yeah. Didn't the video have a GCC recently, the game tech conference? I didn't actually look at many of the news that came out of that, so I'm not too sure what exactly I spoke about other than um, just showing that things are going good, really. But, uh, yeah, technology is always in a, a fun position right now because, uh... I guess people are some. <laughs> that sounds very dismal. People are expendable, but like, you know what I mean? It's like the the science of progress just keep pushing forward, even if people don't need to be part of the equation anymore. Uh, is AI the answer to everything? I don't know. I have a big problem with a uh, like front-facing AI with like chatbot AIs being used commercially because I don't think they're there yet. You can really bait a lot of them into giving you like very bad answers for like what the company really wants to put out. Um, things that really require like a, a bit of like, it's weird as well because like in theory the large language models should be striving in a world where they don't actually have to be exact or correct. 
but uh, no, they're, 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 they're failing a little bit because uh, people keep asking them to do dating advice, and it's like, sir, I'm a Wendy's, like, <laughs> I'm a Wendy's, ch uh, like, drive through thing, I don't do dating advice, and then they're like, pretend you were a, 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 a dating advice chat bot, and then they would just go for it, and it's like, it's The number of safeguards so many of these, like, you know, AI runners have to put in is just insane. It's, uh... So it's almost Easter coming up. Man, it's crept up on us. Easter. Just a week away. Can you believe it? All these squares are just square, you know? It just exists. Destroy vehicles. Just knock it into space. That's the that's the joy of a heavy car. Whereas the ones earlier were just like, yep, it was pain if I touched a sign. I actually used to always play with this car because I used to think it was the best, and so that might be why I'm kind of like I kind of aggressively touch things a lot. Uh, other cars that being said <laughs> that sounds very bad out of context oh yeah as I aggressively touch things very nice very nice blender yeah this is what I meant by the path I really should have taken they do cut these time limits very fine even when you've got these shortcuts all over the shop I think it works out though I'm, I'm starting to get a record score apparently yeah I got that really fine though every single time it's not even a normal difficulty thing because inevitably the uh no this is only normal I'll do a hard run next because I'll, I'll, I'm bound to unlock the next level as well uh, this one's apparently sucky, but I don't know, I'm having an okay time with it. It's got the top speed, and maybe it actually works out a bit more okay on this, on this map. And I also keep running the same people over and over again, so. But for reference as well, just to really annoy, uh, annoy me in particular, the score caps out at 99,999. And you need to get a million total, it's like, come on, just let me get like six digits. <laughs> Because I'd really love to get all the money in one run if I'm really, really good. But no, they just punish you. They're like, no, please stop. <laughs> that $500 for the just is always good. You can always nail that. Yeah, what other like fun things are happening in the world? So yeah, Easter's a week away, uh, which does unfortunately mean that I'm not streaming next week. It'll be a, a week off, and it's not an April Fool's joke. I'm not, I'm not freaking doing an April Fool's joke. No, it's, it's a proper taking a taking a week off. I've already got the the fishing, I've gone fishing avatar going on right now. I'm already prepped and set up. <laughs> Is this time getting less and less? Oh, we're getting- we're cutting it finer and finer. We'll see. <laughs> so I guess this is what I mean by like, yeah, you know, like, if you wanted to see a person do a full long play of this, look up the people who do the full long play and you realize that it's this for eight and a half hours. It's- it's definitely... Uh, interesting for a bit of time. I'm not sure if it's interesting for the whole amount of time. At some point, I'm just gonna call it. I'm just gonna go, yeah, no, that's... I'm good. I'm good. I'll call after this guy. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll switch maps. Because I do want to show off the other maps as well. In, in a proper Road Rage session. And on top of that, I've got a very, very brief bit of uh, thing to show off with uh, uh, the other version. You know, the 
another version. And I'm going to do this for 8 seconds. But I guess that's my loop. Do that loop. It seemed to work. Oh, watch out! Oh, humanity, no! <laughs> uh, I'm a madman! Now, I still think it is easier to get a total score on the easier difficulty still, but I don't believe it's quicker. I actually think it is quicker to be on the harder difficulties. We have Springfield, damn! Wow! Damn, son! Alright, let's switch that difficulty onto hard. We'll see how much money I make. Tons of money. Or I just make no money because I got like no time. We'll drive with Krusty. Springfield Dam. Uh, so yeah, that's $150,000. So a six-ish the way through the game. This is a weird map and it's also punishing. So we'll start off. It's got this weird, like, bit which just snakes back and forth around here. This car is not fast at all. What the heck? It's just, it's so slow. And it has this weird drift going on. What? I'm not sure if the times uh, that you get are actually dependent on, the, on your car. But it does jump. What is that? I'm like, look at that drift! What? Are you kidding me with this drift? <laughs> Maybe that's the secret with this one. It's just got weird drifts. Uh, watch out for that side cut to the right, because it, uh... Doesn't go where you want it to. Am I making more money? It doesn't really look like it, does it? <laughs> get long bits like this and it's like, oh, actually back up a little bit. We can cut through the lake. Now I, playing the console version, I get so lost in this place because it actually has like so many weird like routes all over the place. Having a map and having a, well I think the console version has a map, but having like not 3D going on really does simplify exactly what I'm thinking. At any point in time. Yeah, wow, this clown car really sucks, doesn't it? I did get a fair bit of money out of that one, so. Now I gotta avoid traffic for bonus ducks. Which would be very tricky. Could have gotten the very easy one, but no. It's got this fun little bit where it's all lined off. You know, this probably would look okay with YouTube compression. You probably, like, if you, like, I don't know how it looks on Twitch, but maybe with YouTube it'd be a bit better. I wish YouTube did let me upload with uh, AV1, though. I mean, I think I can, but they re-encode everything to, to, um, what is it, VP9? Did they actually give me VP9, or they don't even? I do. Safe trip. Very nice. Well, this one's kind of interesting. Nice and neat. Just a bit of a bit of a holiday drive around the outside. You get that fun tunnel, which I shall promptly drive through. It's just a weird little tunnel here, but it does simplify that route a little bit. And then you got to do. This freaking cake tin of a corner? Oh my gosh. It was fast though. So there is <laughs> there is that. There is some merit. Oh, he wants to go right across the bridge. Look at this dorky kid anyways. The most insane overbite you've ever seen. So, here's a question. Why exactly did I have this game? I was purely lured in by a, a mate having it, and I was like, wow, 3D, and I didn't really, it didn't really click in my head that, like, there wasn't actually as much of this game as uh, I thought. I mean, there's a bit. There's a bit to this game. 
was enough for a two hour stream and for me to talk about it with some mild bit of nostalgia. Does it hold up? I do wish there were more missions and I do wish there was less money you had to grind for. Just give me the give me the maps a little more frequently. Like if ever if if it was five hundred thousand dollars, or alternatively if you made twice as much money in all the levels, I probably wouldn't be like kinda going like, oh my gosh. Although I have seventeen thousand dollars. It's pretty okay right now. I don't know. I'll have to do some timing and just kind of go like, how long were my runs and how much money did I actually make? Because I think ultimately you, the fare you get, the amount of money you get, is actually kind of dependent on the length, the distance, of the trip. So I'm not sure if there's really any good way of going about other than taking, you know, long trips like this all the time. Depending on how terribly I do this one, uh, this might also uh, show off one of the, one of the dirtiest mechanics of this level. Maybe, we'll see. I'm definitely gonna go close to it, well, I'll show you that. My time is apparently uh, only up. It's kind of quick. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a weird jump here, and if you fall, you fall into a sewer bit that you just cannot like recover from. It's so mean. I'll show it off in a little bit then. Uh, we're at an hour 30, so in that case, I'll call uh, that the me showing off what a regular version of the game is. This is not the end of the stream yet. But, uh, we got $170,000 in an hour and a half, and all the missions, so... I'd say that's a fairly good run. If you want to pick up where I left off, here's a password. Enjoy. Enjoy that password. But I am going to pull in the cheat, because, uh... I think as a kid I did actually beat the game, but... It's... it's... it's a fair bit of work. Because it's just... it's that. I'm six. It's a fair bit. It's a fair bit. So instead, let's concede. Let's put in uh, this one password, which does indeed get you everything in the game. You're popping Maggie. You're popping uh, Willy. You're popping Bart. You're popping Wigan. You're popping Apu. You're popping Mo. You're popping Krusty. You're popping Barney. It's. Oh, that's not Barney. Sorry. Barney. There you go. Yeah, yeah, effectively it's a one-off. Because, yeah, I, I'm like, yeah, I could, I could legit play the same levels again and again and again and again. And show you exactly what the game is. Or I could just uh, do it. So, uh, let's go into the options. First of all, uh, we have an ending there. I can show off the ending when we're done. Uh, but also, you can see in the course layout, why not make it your longest stream? Because I have to go to sleep. <laughs> I am, I am not doing a six hour stream. I cannot stay up for a six hour stream. What would that be? I'd end at 2.30 a.m. I gotta work in the morning, it's not happening. Uh, I, I did have um, a bonus video over Christmas last year, but I don't have anything planned this time. Nah, nah, I don't, I, cause I, I gotta leave soon-ish for a trip, so it's not too, not too bad, but. Um, yeah, no, I'll be back the next week. That's all good. Uh, so here's our map of Springfield Dam. You can see the, the weird little section there, and I'll actually show it off in a in a bit, but uh, yeah, like, there's a weird tunnel as well going on down the bottom. We'll give it a, sh a show, but uh, we have Downtown, which is uh, that level we saw from the, um, from the mission, the first long play. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, and it's like, you saw how quick I went through the missions. The missions do not occupy anywhere near that much time. And the console game is kind of the same deal. It's just a, a bit of a grind fest. You don't unlock things fast enough. You just have to do the same levels again and again, and the car only changes it up slightly, so. This uh, this map's got, you know, it's city streets. Lots of lots of fun things. You got uh, jumps to do the diagonal highway going on. That's kind of fun. We got this one called Country Road, and I think this is actually probably the most interesting map of them all. Which we'll see in a bit as I get into it. Um, and finally we have Springfield Mountains. Again, probably some stuff going on, so... Certainly these, these uh, maps get... Yeah, yeah, the simulating is kind of alright, so... Uh, I don't have the... I have the difficulty normal, so we'll... 
Actually, we'll, we'll commit to hard. We'll commit to hard, because it'll draw the line a bit sooner. It does, yeah. So let's do a quick Sunday drive just to show off the remaining bit of that third map. Here's your reg uh, your remaining characters, although, spoilers, every character on the password is also in here. So we have Snake, we got Professor Frink, we got Otto, we got Barney, we got Mo, we got Chief Wigan, we got a Poo. Hang on, every single one of these characters had a mission. Like all of them. Very odd. Uh, and as your reward, you do unlock Mr. Burns himself for, uh, you know, as a bonus. Um, the console version has a Homer also driving Mr. Plow as an extra car. It's not in this one though, so, uh, we can be Barney, the Plow King. Let's check out the dam. Damn. Nope. Apu has the best car. Mr. Burns' car kind of sucks. So, yeah, so Sunday Drive, you literally Sunday Drive. It's like a little sprite, but like, look how much space they wall you off here. Like, why? Why are you gonna do that? I don't know why, they, they really should have just made the later cars better. Like, every time. I love this bridge, because you can do this as well. This is what I mean by this, like, bizarre, like, underneath area. It's like a weird trough here. Yeah, sorry, no. You, you unlock a poo at like 750 or 800,000. So this is the reason why this is a bit annoying, is uh, if you ever fall anywhere around here, you have to come out of this, well, is this, yeah, this is the, the ramp you have to go up. If you're around here, around the canyon part, and you fall, you gotta go up that one ramp, and you're nowhere near your destination, and you'll poof it up, and you know, it's all over. Or you can go up here, if you want, into the into the void. It's, it's curious though, it's like, oh, you know, like, it's a bit of character, I feel, to an otherwise, like, very odd map, and you can cause the, <laughs> the 3D to panic a little bit, because it's like, it's not really perfect for what it is. But you can tell what they're going for. Yeah, it's like, this game has stuff going for it. And I think that's actually the really, like, cool part about it all. And yeah, you know, you can drive off here, there's a, there's a destination over here in the middle of the, middle of the lake for some reason. You don't sink down into the, the deep water, but you do, you know, it does slow you down a bit more. There's this one bridge over here, a weird wall for some reason. And then yeah, you got this, like, little parts around here and the, the mountainous track down below. Yeah, I mean, like, strip back the whole crazy taxi, do the same thing over and over again. If you could toy around with the later levels more, I actually think people would probably accept this game a bit more. I actually don't mind, um, I wish, hold on, do we have a, uh, I don't think we have a, like, a list of when things unlock, you're gonna have to scroll through the long play. <laughs> I love these hills just all over the place, and you got this one little, like, road around the outside. So if you just, if you don't care about the hills, you just go around it all. It's weird, it's funky, but I like it. It's fun. So. Let's uh, exit here and start doing just, let's do a run of the remaining three levels. We'll pick a fun car for each one. So how about for the city, we'll do a... Uh... Hey, where's Mr. Burns at? I thought I unlocked him. Oh well, we'll pick Snake. So we'll do downtown. The music is not what you'd expect for downtown. Yeah, yeah. It's just super fast. I believe uh, Snake's car is pretty fast as well, but it does have like a bit of a turning issue. Man, hard really caught me on that one. He's right next to Homer. But that, that last Homer is the, like, that's the mission reward, so it's like, technically, even though it's at the end, it's not actually, like, the last one you get. And yeah, 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 he's the last, hey, hold on. Oh, gotta do a Yui. Yeah, this one's kind of neat, just because 
I don't know, I get kind of Midtown Madness vibes. Midtown Madness is... And uh, I, I think that, oh, there was like a... There was some video I saw based on, like, describing about how open world games haven't, like, gone anywhere and how GTA 5 is, like, technically the best open world racing game that's come out in, like, recent times. Um, but it's like... The... The, like, epitome of, like, open world racing games really was, like, Need for Speed Underground 2. Uh, and maybe Test Drive Unlimited. Which I have yet to play, and I really actually do want to give it a go at some point. I like these burn signs for extra time, by the way. It's such a, like, understated mechanic. But yeah, long gone are the really, like, confusing, like, pathways all over the place. It's just straight city dash. Go down weird routes and weird corners and... Come out at a fairly quick destination. Like, look at this one. It's like, oh my gosh. Bro, you could just walk. Here. Who are the 23 people on GameFAQs who downvoted the passwords? It's like, this password does everything you need. It's a, it's a million dollars. It's got everything unlocked. I wish there was something smaller for me to hit. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> the sound it makes. <laughs> Whoop, that guy has gone to space. He has left. I guess we're back in the head, so. Keep going. Keep it going. This is what I love as well. You can actually use this to do like a fun go left here. Works. <laughs> in theory, I guess you could do that on any of the diagonal parts. Maybe not. Maybe not what's required here, but I like it. Yeah, too bad. It's like whatever, whatever. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting that pet road is there. But uh, whatever. Um. Also, I love the circles. The circles around the target really sell it. It's very pilot wings, isn't it? They're kind of they're kind of doing the circles everywhere. Will I get more money for just doing a good job on hard? That's a question. I'm really curious about. For reference, there is a button to eject- it's the L button to eject passengers, and it's like... <laughs> and the first time you find out about it, you're like, no, really? Just boot out someone right when you didn't want to at all. Do like me a good, just flat orange sunset sky, though. The Simpsons is all about the sky. It's the first thing you see on the show. Clouds parting tells you it's the Simpsons. But did they make any Futurama games? No. Well, maybe they did. I just completely blanked on like I don't know what I was a bit upset I should probably finish. Oh good, I got there. But yeah. Uh other than that, I mean Things are oh, you know what? Actually, I played a game that I had as a kid and I never beat. Um, PS2 game. Uh, I will not describe it. I will just hint that yes, I'll probably play it at some point on stream. Um, certainly, it's a it's a three weeker. It's about that amount of time. Is this a dead end? Uh, almost. What a weird route there. 
What a weird part. I know I'd be making that expression too if I'm starting to cut these times like this. Ah. This is a general thing I have though. The game that I did play is not a racing game, but I do have a general problem where... Not... Well, not general. But it's, it's like, I really do like playing games that I played already on stream. And a lot... I have played a lot of racing games or music games and they're always a fun one to get on YouTube. Um, so like I'm doing a, you know, like I'm, I'm, I've been doing like retro achievements devving for, for SingStar, which is done. Oh no, I've goofed it, I've goofed it. Um, although I might go back for all these like regional subsets, I've been digging into that. And it's like, man, like I didn't even realize that there were like two different Disney versions of SingStar in German, but they're both the same game, but one's in English and one's in German, but the menu is always in German. And there's also an English version anyways, like, for actual England. That was insane! Wow! This is exactly the same password. <laughs> It's like the score caps out at a million. <laughs> Alright, to the next level. With a different character, shall we? Let's do Professor Frink, why not? We're now in Country Road. Which is probably the most interesting one I see. I, I think this is the most interesting map. So it looks pretty normal. You know, oh, wow, this start time is terrible. But I believe the hover car actually is impervious to... Can slow down, I guess. It just goes. So what makes this cool is uh, the, this tunnel here, and uh, this map is split up into three different sections, each with different music and skyboxes. You got the glum power plant section, and then you just, I guess, this is the country. You're in the country. It's got this hilarious music. And there's also a... Basically a dropper point on the top of this hill. And then these tunnels... These tunnels keep like whining all over the shop. And then you'll get a... What, what this is. The actual country road. Where we're... On the beach. This is why I actually <laughs> took Professor Frank. I was going to just drive all over the place over here without slowing down. And hit seagulls as well. Very nice. Very, very nice. Actual in the middle of the ocean. The music is a vibe though. But it, I, I don't know. I, I like this just because it's like, man, what was I expecting out of The Simpsons Road Rage? Not quite this. And I'm not sure if the console game actually has this kind of feeling because of like how wildly different these skyboxes and all these like tunnels actually make this map really feel. I don't know, it's kind of cool. The chickens, man, the chickens all over the place. Whatever the heck's going on, oh come on. Whatever the heck's going on in here. I guess that's a f this is a fence. This is Long Long Ranch right here. Oh, it's a farm. Must relate it to Zelda. I'm sorry I did that. This I also love as well. Is that like there's this one point on the map over up here. So as we go up through this one tunnel. And this one tunnel. You keep going uphill and just in a, on a volcano. Casual volcano. This game's got a volcano. It's great. I love it. It's a complete dead end as well. <laughs> it's like you got a U turn to go anywhere, but it's like, man, how very wacky. How very just strange. And I, I appreciate it. I applaud it. I really do like that they, they put in the effort to, you know, really make these, these levels just feel different. 
looks very good. So props to these people. I'm showing the credits, man. I, I will show off the credits. There's one little shortcut there. Save you a ton of time. Too bad there's barely any. Oh. I was like, too bad there's barely anything for me to hit on the way, and I'm like, nice. Just tons of items right there. You know, I'm not really getting money slower by doing this on hard. Like, it seems fairly just normal. You know, like... I don't know. So, maybe that's the trick? Play the game on hard. Get tons of money. Look at that. Outrun freaking vibes. I don't know. I don't know if you run over crabs in Outrun. I should play- oh, that's another one I should play. Outrun coast to coast. Like, look at this, man. It goes all over the shop. You kinda have to go this way. Ah! No! And then it's like, up! And down and around we go. Everything just goes into a tunnel. The only thing is that, uh, yeah, you can see, <laughs> you can clearly see the areas that are on the neighboring, like, routes. They're not actually directly connected, but that's just how the map works. We're back in the city, the power plant. Oh, you still got 20 seconds, don't panic. <laughs> Mole man. I'm the mole from the ministry. And you'll all bow down to me. Have I sung that one before? I think I have. <laughs> um, yeah. I hope everyone has a very good uh, Easter coming up. Spend some time with your family. Have some, some weird dishes if you haven't had already. I'm trying to convince my mom to have some chicken quesadillas, and I know chicken quesadillas are not really, you know, it's, it's not really an Easter thing. Uh, yes, by the way, you probably can go down the river if you wanted to. Uh, why exactly? I'm not sure. But I think you can. And this music's insane when it goes fast, it's like, oh my gosh. I do wish you got a time bonus for, like, hitting jumps, though. It's all there in the performance mode, but in... in regular mode, nah. Rip, by the way, I wanted to just drive out to sea. That score's not half bad, though. Still on hard difficulty, yeah. Still going. Dang it. That's the only problem with the tunnels. You just cannot see traffic coming up. Yeah. Other than that, though, uh, for as much as I criticize, you know, Dragon's Dogma 2 and all that stuff, uh, ultimately, if people find enjoyment out of a game, that should be fine. But, I do want to make it very known. Can these game devs please stop making their games 70 US dollars, 108 Australian dollars, or 80 US dollars, 120 Australian dollars? Seriously, we're at that point. And still charge absorbent DLC or microtransactions or whatever. It's like, bro, I am so very, very done. I'm like, I just want my games to be like cheap singular packages. Uh, I really don't even want DLC anymore. I'm kind of like, just. Just release a game, and move on. And I know some people are probably going to hate that when it comes to multiplayer games, because it's like they want support, because there are games that get support, and will therefore keep their player count for a long time. And I'm like, you know what keeps the player count for a long time? Getting, getting some AI bots to fill in the, the capacity, because then I can play an old multiplayer game with actual people. Or just a good game. That works too. If one clicks with me, sweet. I also do just play a lot of single-player games, so I am 
the advice. Yeah, 65 euros. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man... Does it deserve being more expensive than the typical video game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And as someone who hasn't played it... I don't know. That's always a fun one when you're on the internet and people say your opinion doesn't count. And it's like, my opinion is just the reason why I haven't bought it. It doesn't mean it. Like, it may be wrong. This is a cheeky spot. I would like to point out that people on PC are especially annoyed by DLC because PC only ever got Dark Arisen release and basically bundled all the- Oh, yeah, yeah. Same thing with um, Dark Souls. Had the same thing for the first game. Um, where, uh, like, the only version people got was the the DLC version, right? If the gameplay is as good, I hope our DD player seem it's worth the price. Hey, that's good if you think it's worth the price, though. That's that's ultimately the the best outcome. Um, or alternatively, it just goes down in price and everything is worth it when it's uh, 10 bucks. Is it worth it for the game studios to do it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they can afford doing that all the time. You're looking at a game that allows over 100 hours. Yeah. I'm really, I'm, I'm a tough one when it comes to replayability because I rarely replay long games. Like, I know Skyrim has replayability and stuff, but like, I'm not, I know a bunch of people, some of the fights are so cool. I'm the kind of person who played Skyrim once. I'm the person who played Fallout 3 once. I'm just like, I felt like I did everything. I went to a bunch of places. I did the Republic of Dave side quests. We were introduced to the Hydra soonish in the game. Soonish. So I'll actually do a, a directed graph of like which characters correspond to which other characters and how long the trips are. That'd be kind of cool. You know how to fight a Hydra and Dragon Star? I, to be honest, I've barely even seen any gameplay of Dragon Star. Like. And I own it! I own it as well! It's atrocious, I know. You have to climb its next and hit it while climbing out of the heads. Or climbing to cut the heads. Cut the heads. I might be able to keep this up forever. Like, I'm on hard. I'm still going, apparently. I think we'll call, the, we'll call this one here, because I think I've shown it off in a good amount of detail. We've still got a long track. I have to quickly cauterize the wound with fire, or the head immediately regrows. Interesting. Gazelle. And if you manage to cut off all the heads with the cauterized wound, so you have a brief window of hitting the stumps to deal tons of damage. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, I'll give the gameplay a look. Seriously, go to YouTube. And look up Dragon's Dogma fight. Or Evil Eye or Griffin. Yeah. We'll finally do a level with a, a poo. In the Springfield Mountains. Talking about Dragon's Dogma 1 here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could play it as well. I could just go on blind. So we got mountains, we got rocks all over the place. These rocks are massive. I remember this one on the console version is very hilly. Yeah, play on my own time. I'll see it. Yeah, I'll see. Um, yeah, I'll give us a, a go at some point. Put it on my definitely to playlist. So I think the main thing with this one is that it's just generally good, and it's faster than some other cars. So it's just like, yep, does the job. But it's not the the heaviest, so it still kind of slows down when you touch people, I guess. Direct out of vision and hope he managed to realize it in Dragon's Dogma 2. I hope so too, and I really, really hope that, you know, and, and that that's ultimately, I've said it, uh, fusion of Western and, and Japanese RPG, very nice. They put in all those microtrans to get more budget. I... I I don't know if I... I just like that, by the way, <laughs> just canyon jump right there. I don't know if I agree, like because I feel like games should always keep their budgets under wraps, under controls, and I don't believe it's sustainable 
even if, you know, it's like, oh, we need more money, we need more manpower in order to produce stuff, I'm like, why? I think there's a degree of working smarter, not harder. And there's probably more to it that we just don't know. Is the game ambitious? Yeah, maybe, yeah. But I also do feel like there are relative, well, there's fairly ambitious games that don't cost an arm and a leg. So I'm like, I, I think there is a way. There, there probably is a way. This is probably rich of me to say this, given that I've never really done game dev, so. Gosh, look at all these obstacles all over the place. How many Elden Rings do we have? Uh, I, I mean, I guess it's like, the thing is that I can cite quite a bunch of open world games, like if we really wanted to go with it. I guess it's more that like, we have fewer games now because game studios only make one game every like five years now. That just seems to be the pace. Games like cost more in singular goes now, as opposed to making more cheaper games. I'm not 100% sure if the amount of money... I mean, I think there is more money going into them in general than there used to be. But I do, yeah. Where's the... Yeah, I was like, where is anyone? Yeah, like, uh, like it's not something where it's like... I'd fight, I'd may, maybe I'd fight you for the microtransactions. Like, that's it. I don't know. I, 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 I feel like, ah, the ultimate form of his own brainchild. Yeah, yeah, definitely Elden Ring was... I don't... If Elden Ring was, like, you know, the ultimate vision, but I also don't know if... It's tough for me. One, because I don't know Miyazaki. If I had to, like, say it in Zelda terms, because I know my Zelda, it's like... Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are certainly very large games, and Nintendo is like, yeah, no, we have to, you know, spend the time, put in the long amount of time to develop Breath of the Wild. I don't know if that really appeared in Tears of the Kingdom, because it's a lot of the same map. But, uh, like, you know, I completely get why these studios, uh, you know, put in the long amount of time. Yeah, oh, yeah. <sighs> To be, to be honest, I think the game could have been, like, trash, and they still would have needed microtransactions. That actually might have been... That, that's my gut feeling. Oh, the frame rate sucks, though, when you try to drive around it. Um, but, like, that's what I mean, is that, like, I I don't... And, and... How do I phrase this? Microtransactions seem very, very... Same map is very unfair to say. I... It might be a little bit. Also, there's a graveyard. There's a cemetery over on the side of the map. Just so it's interesting. It is very, it is very different, and it's certainly got the underground, which I think the underground is a lot of substance and not a lot of content. But the over, the over, you know, the sky parts are great, and my sister was super annoyed. She just called me and said, hey, I played Breath of the Wild so much. Now I'm super annoyed everything changed. Oh, really? Oh, I, I didn't, like, I didn't mind... My, my issue with why I feel, sorry, my issue with me feeling Tears of the Kingdom has the same map is that I loved the discovery and just the, the going in one direction and not knowing what to expect of Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom, I went so automatic on it. I just knew where everything was, I just went for it, and I probably cleared the game 30 hours quicker than I really should have. Uh, let's be honest. Better to reuse a good map and make a great game than to create a completely new map and make it mediocre. Yes, but Zelda has never had a mediocre map in my eyes. Then the question is, did I really pay attention and look for the new... Oh, there definitely was, like, new stuff. I mean, I did all the Koroks again. I got the exact same prize again, so... There were a hundred more of them as well, because I had to do the ones where you carry one dude from one place to another 50 times. Would we already have Tiz out now, if they had to do- Uh, it was six years. 
it's hard for me to justify. <laughs> that's a, that's a big like, I don't, I like, I don't know in terms of game dev. I know Nintendo generally keeps the staff very tight, which, by the way, well, great segue. <laughs> we can watch the ending. So once you hit a million dollars, this cutscene plays. A million dollars. I work in the IT of a big company. Yeah, yeah, like, I think there is diminishing returns as you add more staff. Um, and obviously these big games that cost a ton, it is diminishing returns. I think, like, quarter the money, you will get half the product. Um, whether that is, you know, is your vision, you know, deserve half the money? That's, that's a thing, though. Um, as long as they don't interfere with the vision of the game. Oh, and Homer sleeps, because this game takes eight and a half hours. <laughs> I would be tired too. And then, uh, the Simpsons Road Rage. And then, uh, you get this, uh, bit where... The dancing, and... Bart is playing a cello very wrong. And Grandpa's on the drums. We get some credits, so... Thank you, these people, for making a fairly... Alright game. The technology's kinda cool, the maps are cool. I just wish that... You got like twice as much money so you could be done with it in twice the amount of time. Or half the time. Um, but yeah, what's the what's the fine point with like how long if you like Diablo style games? I I didn't get into Diablo 3 and uh, I didn't get into Dark Spore when it was active. We talked about the last epoch briefly. We did talk about the last epoch. It's good fun? It's good fun. Nice. Oh my gosh, it's secretly a Japanese developed game. The dancing's good though. Playing Necromancer, my skeletons were fun. Bone Golem. Man, that's a real tight ship of staff as well. Didn't really go. Not too many of them. And then Homer decides to... <laughs> you watch the you watch the, the, the Porygon episode. Bone Golem is a massive thing, and in the first fight it sped into the enemy group, did a big AoE ground hit, felt very weighty. Like man, sound design is great. Very, very nice. So that is the ending of the game, but I have one last thing to show you. And uh, that is, let's uh, go briefly into an intermission for like 30 seconds. Oh my gosh, music. Alright, cut back. <laughs> so uh, this is the alternative uh, release of the game. Uh, for some odd reason, the, the version I played, which was the previous one, uh, also was released in Europe in some way, but there is an actual European version. You can pick from five amazing languages. What's really weird is it has a different title screen as well. Which is a little more <laughs> interesting and engaging than just this. I don't know why it has its own title screen, but sure. We can also go into the options again and put in the same password just to, you know, get the use. So, what was it? Mag. Uh, but did that mean they intended for Maggie to be a playable character at some point? Interesting. Probably not. <laughs> uh, poo. No. Press the button. Same password. It all works the same. Uh, other than that, it's. Almost the same game. Actually, it basically is the same game. Uh, we, can do, we can do the cop car, why not? I still have the... No, I don't... I don't have intermission, do I? Do I? Your stream might have frozen. It actually might have frozen. Yeah, no, I'm... I, I just checked back in. No, we're good, we're good. You gotta refresh. Ah. <laughs> um, so if we go back into just a regular old level for a hot moment. You know one thing that's actually cool, and, and this is this applies to both versions, is the, the, the map has a bit of transparency to it. I think that that's like genuinely quite interesting. Um, the other weird part is you're gonna see some icons that are changed up the top. 
it threw me off. <laughs> it threw me off that the icons are different in this version. Um, but I also think the amount of money you gain is actually accelerated in this version. So all the complaints I have are a little bit <laughs> put to rest by this one, other than you gotta deal with the icons being different. My assumption is that, you know, those icons were the ones that were saying jump, slow, stop, that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, like that, that's one where it's like near, for example, and then this is you stop. I assume because there's multiple languages, it's a lot easier to have those ones not be in different languages, or, or to not say just English. So, replace it with an icon. But the arrow is different as well. It's slightly different. Why? This is a very curious thing. So I'd love to, um, you know, cutting room floor, someone would investigate. I'm not sure, someone might spot other differences as well. But, like, why? And this is always a, a curious one, because, um... Yeah, like, they look similar. They're both yellow. But do a compare and contrast. You will see, like, a bit of a difference. Uh, and what I want to know is, one, what's the actual, like, release date of this one compared to the other one? I assume this one would be the later one, right? Traffic signs are in different countries? Maybe. Maybe, actually. Um... But the, like, the, uh, I assume versions that come out with, like, more languages are usually the later versions. It's a little strange to have, she's not even in the car. <laughs> she's, like, hanging out the back. Oh, because it's, it's, it's only got one window for, like, half of it. <laughs> what a weird design, because they're limited by that. Yeah. <laughs> Like a little char cube car. Um, but yeah, like, so if this one came out second, then one, why release it in Europe at all if you're gonna release a multiple language version, anyways? And then also, uh, a classic thing is that, you know, a game comes out for the America region because it's 60 frames a second, 60 hertz. And then it comes out in Europe because it's 50 and it needs to have like a little bit of an adjustment. But for handheld games, that's never actually been a problem because the handheld is the same in all regions. The Game Boy in France is the same as the Game Boy in Honduras. But... Does Honduras get 60 F get NTSC versions? That's why I, I should probably look that one up. Um, so, in theory, and for many Game Boy games, it is the same version. You might have, like, um, a Europe version with the languages because they released the American version early, um, or a Japanese version early. Um, you start to see more world releases later, and especially for games that don't actually need translations, like they're all pretty much in English anyways. If you asked that earlier, I might have an answer by now. One of my best friends is from Honduras. Ah! <laughs> and he went to bed because it's not a good time for Honduras. <laughs> Poor Honduras, they miss out on my streams. Maybe it'll be better. Oh, oh, also, yeah, just just a heads up as well. So not only is next week Easter, but also uh, the Sunday right before will be Daylight Savings. So we changed the clocks backwards an hour. So the stream starts an hour later than it usually does. Yeah, yeah. So you go an hour forward and we go an hour back. So it'll be two hours... Uh, you know, later, I guess, for you, because you've gone forward. That always throws me off. So for me, it's 12.30 instead of 10.30. So it's a better time, is it a better time for you, uh, in the daylight savings, or it's a better time now? Or I guess it's not daylight savings. <laughs> We get rid of daylight savings. I think when we have one or two more weeks where it's 11.30. Yeah, because it, it's always, it, it always throws off because um, I know some people uh, in America and it's like they had their daylight savings um, start a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't matter. Very, very dedicated, very dedicated. The time does not matter. I have time on Monday, or I don't. Very fair. I like how I'm just doing like one more run here. Just why not? There's really nothing gained. I'm just going, going to town. But yeah, what a, what a curious.
title, both on a technical level of just, like, what it's actually doing, and then ultimately, like, what kinds of interesting design things does it have? And, yeah, I defend this. The only real problem is really that you gotta play the game for eight hours. I'd, I'd prefer some more interesting stuff, but... You know, if you want, like, crazy taxi on the go, I think this is probably a better option than anything else at the time. At least until my boy outrun 2006 Coast to Coast on the PSP. Which is not even crazy taxi. <laughs> it is a perfect handout for playing occasionally. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The, the you know, you go in, you, you go for like 15 minutes, and then you stop. The, the only pro- oh, problem number two. Problem number two, no battery save. It really, really, if you could save, it'd be fine. But it's the fact you gotta write down a password every time. That's just pain. That's, that's just painful. Why? Why'd they do that? This is when I suddenly boot up the uh, PlayStation 2 version and go, ooh. It's really weird as well, because the PlayStation 2 version is done by a Radical Entertainment, and I forgot what they did before, off the top of my head. Um, they didn't do a uh, Pandemonium, did they? Or was it that? But uh, they later did Hit and Run, and then they later did Crash Tag Team Racing, which sort of just feels like Hit and Run again. And I forgot what they did afterwards. Look it up right now. Uh, I gotta pause just to type Radical Entertainment. Just to type it wrong as well. Best part. <laughs> Good old Radical Entertainment. You know what, actually, one thing I really, really want to do, and this is completely unrelated to everything, I really want to scrape game facts and just like have all the content in like some kind of backup because I have a very very bad fear of game facts going down and in the entire like trove of content on the internet because we all rely on game facts so much still oh the X is different <laughs> I think because it, it told me to turn back last time you have to now infer what the arrows and stuff mean like if I look at this it takes me like two goes like Click in my brain what's going on. You know, even though I said there were good cards and bad cards, I feel like I'm kind of getting the same scores anyways. Alright, I'm going to try and steer with one hand while I click a thing. I'm very good at, like, using a control of one hand, apparently. I don't know why. Uh... They did not do... Oh, I'm not good at looking where I'm going with one hand. Um, they did Independence Day on the PS1. I don't know if that one was, was good or bad, though. I, all I know is it's ABGN approved. Just give it a seal of approval. Oh, they did Prototype afterwards. That's what they did. And then, uh, sort of, sort of became a, you know, Activision Guinea Studio. Which is, oh, now... Now you are forced, at least they're not forced to do Call of Duty, but they were forced to do Destiny. So. Yeah, they did uh, Prototype 1 and 2, they did Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster on the PS1. And, uh, any fun old one in there? Apparently they're credited for Mario is Missing. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what, a, what a great one to be associated with. Oh, there we go. Oh, but what is this? Words. Fun fact, both games were censored in Germany. Germany censored a lot of games. Still got the gazelle, though. No dismemberment. Ah, shame. We gotta have dismemberment, man. That's what makes it. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, with this other version, I mean, all the missions are the same. I Maybe there are some small differences here and there, but it is... For the most part, generally the same game, but it's got different languages, which you can't pick in-game, because, you know, why would you be able to do that? But now I can listen to Extra 2. Or, uh, <laughs> Mountain 2. It's a jam. 
But I think that's it. That's pretty much everything I can show off with this game. You've pretty much seen everything. It's just rinse and repeat for another six more hours. So with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, you can follow on YouTube. Or if you're on YouTube, you can follow on Twitch, where you'll see streams every week, except for next week. We're well, not doing one next week. But Easter, have some fun time with your family. Enjoy the Monday. Uh, if you enjoyed, uh, if you missed part of the stream, then it will be on YouTube. Uh, two weeks possibly, yes. Um, it'll be on YouTube, probably the quality will be, be better, who knows, we'll see. Um, and, uh, if, uh, if you want to see weird ramblings or other kind of weird things I mentioned, feel free, I follow on Pleroma, m.bnd.com. And, uh, other than that, uh, if you enjoyed this game, try and find a copy somewhere. Hold on, let me get the, let me get the, the Wii Buy price. What does, like... Simpsons Road Rage GBA on. Hold on, do we actually have a Wii Buy price for this? We don't. We've got the console versions, and the uh, the PS2 one is twenty eight bucks. Thank you, uh, twenty eight Australian. That feels like a fair bit. I don't know if that's worth it. What about a uh, on eBay for a GBA one? Uh, someone's selling theirs for. Oh, it's very very like worn with time, but uh. 15 bucks? 16 bucks? Probably works. And hey, you don't have to worry about a battery save dying. I guess. So, don't forget to try Dragon's Dogma. I don't know if I'd be able to play Dragon's Dogma in time for the next stream, but I definitely... I'll give it a go at some point. I'll give it a download, we'll check it out. Someone told me to do End Roll ages ago, and I've still got that, like, chilling there, so... Anyways, have a good one. Peace!